I'm Sharon Haver from FocusOnStyle.com and... Brad Bowles from The Real Housewives of New York City. And we actually, uh, uh, not me, but The Housewives started filming yesterday. And I don't know if you're aware of it, but they've already got Kelly Ben Simone in the New York Post yep, today. on a bicycle. On a bicycle in Central Park. And Jilly's actually filming today, my girl. Big shout out to you. But that's not why we're here. We're not going to talk about New York Housewives gossip yet because that will be coming in the weeks ahead. Don't worry. Because, you know, Brett is the number one blabbermouth. <laughs> no. I, well, you, I, we really, you know, anything that I'm going to be involved with, I can't really talk about in the season until it rolls out anyway. But outside of that, there is a lot of housewife gossip that still exists within those worlds. So let's talk about something that's more important today other than housewives and gossip. Let's talk about your favorite restaurant in New York City, where you go to on a weekly basis. I don't have a favorite restaurant. We just had a conversation. But it's not my favorite restaurant. We just had a conversation. No, 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 no. It's not. I have lots of restaurants that I go to on a weekly basis. And quite frankly, I love you dearly, but I don't want to chat with you when I go out to eat. No, but no, the problem you know, is, no, is you, that... You all know I'm, I, I, I married a man... Who likes who, to drive around in his black Porsche. Yeah, one of the two. So would you the, just get in the car and just drive until you we drive? drive. Until but you find but wait, while the weather is nice, okay. we take the poodle, who normally you would hear the poodle in the background because the poodle yes. has this thing with Brad and he's very Bo. barky. But Bo's been locked so, away. <laughs> Bo's been put away. But the last time we did this, you forgot Bo about Bo. I did not forget about <laughs> Bo. Bo is locked away for He was an hour. so quiet. No, no. Bo, Bo, is, Bo, is, Bo is napping right now. Mm. He's in his... Bo is in the only room with a solid door on it yes. in this loft. So, because otherwise, he's a really quiet dog, but he just goes wild when he sees Brad. That's true. So we're going to talk know. about something very important But we today. were talking about food. So anyway, yes. back yes. to food. What we were going to say is I, unfortunately, or fortunately, mm -hmm. have this really wonderful kitchen, which you'll be seeing one of these days, mm -hmm. and I really am a stovetop chef, but my husband loves to cook, but we don't cook that much. We go out to eat. A lot. Well, what I'd like to do actually is what we should invite my girlfriend Julianne Rose we over, and, cook and we'll, in my we'll, we'll do it. We'll do a cooking session in the kitchen, and we'll we'll upload it for all you guys to see because she's an amazing cook. She's absolutely fabulous, and you all know her from her own show, The Roving Chef. So we'll definitely, and she's going to probably be doing some contributing uh, stories for us in the not too distant future about healthy food and how it's still going to be tasty. But I wanted to actually talk about another subject matter right now because you're kind of you're like. When we were growing up in New York... I don't know where he's going. So yes, she does. I, I really don't. Yes, she really does. Um, when really we were growing don't. up in New York, one of the most amazing influences in fashion, and I think back in the day you all remember, her name was Elsa Clinch. And Elsa Clinch is one of the most... Saturday mornings, 10.30. Hello, never forgot it. See What uh, The question is, is that, I mean... They replaced Soul Train, which used to be on Saturday morning, 10 a.m. Where is Elsa Clinch? I don't know, but I... I you know, it's funny because she really did set the path for intelligent notice I oh, say intelligent incredible. fashion television and I think what about lights just in that's a weird thing and it was a poltergeist <laughs> that was Elsa that was Elsa Elsa are you still <laughs> Elsa's still around she's around yeah she is but um I love Elsa I think that she was the first time and I, I remember once dating this guy and he was saying I'll call you at 10 35 and I'm like well what why and he goes I have to watch uh, Elsa clench and I'm like Hmm. Obviously, he's gay. Handsome. No, he was straight. He was <laughs> handsome. He was Jewish, which uh -huh. you know was not easy for me to find in my book. It still isn't. That's why we married the guy. Handsome Jewish, but he also and, he, and French. Mm -hmm. But he was also a garmento. Really? And that was the dead giveaway. I'm like, hmm. You know, I'd rather have a gay guy watching Elsa Clinch at 10:35 than the garmento so he, oh, so getting was, the, so the was, runway uh, shows. Oh yes, yeah, so he was getting the runway shows to knock it all off. His name was David, I think. Um, so anyway, that was it. I, I don't think I even after saw him after he discussed his 10:35. But, but on, a, on a more you know but let's, profound note, yeah, let's talk Elsa about the prominence. Really was great. Yeah, let's talk about the prominence of, uh, of of someone like Elsa. Elsa Clinch, I think, really she was serious. She was serious. She was, serious. She, she was not a great beauty. Well, but fashion she was, is no, not but, about beauty, no, nor style. And, but her style, she, if, you, if you actually look at all those episodes, she was dressed impeccably. She had timeless Blazer. style. She was lovely. And uh, I can just close my eyes right now and hear that voice. And I really, you know... Can you do an impersonation? <laughs> no, I don't sure? even want to go there yet. But I will say, I, and, and I think that we're missing that sort of fashion sensibility uh, and somebody that... I mean, we, that was an amazing show, and there's nothing like that out there anymore. You Maybe can't, you should do it. I would love to do it. We, 
I well, mean, I it think needs one of something. The, I think one of the reasons is, is because at that time, Elsa took the designers very seriously. Very. It wasn't entertainment. Mm -hmm. It was informative. It was information. It was journalism. And through time, it's changed where, you know, fashion is entertainment. Part of the reason is... You know, because as soon as the show was on the runway, it's all over the internet. You know, then Elsa yes, had the time true. to digest it. She was the first one to get in there and get it on on the news, on the news, not the internet. I mean, and that's very true, actually, because you have to remember something. I mean, a lot of you who aren't, who uh, who don't have the opportunity to go to any of the fashion shows and have inside access, you, those of us that do, the thing about it that's very different that you all don't understand or know about, it is truly editors of magazines it is buyers the primary purpose of a it's fashion for is, is for buyers so you have so and then you have your you have, you have your sprinkling of celebrities in the audience and then you have the designers friends who fill the extra seats they're invited but it is primarily the first focus is and the buyers and, and the customers. editors yeah and the top customers that's it that's all that's usually in that audience and so you have to remember back in the day Elsa Clinch opened up that world to the American public, which was phenomenal. You know, Brad really likes to talk about back in the day. I know. But you know, it's really funny because Brad is only 26. I know. Well, I've had very good surgery. <laughs> I love my doctor. If any of you want to know who my doctor is, I'll tell you. Just call me. <laughs> Just call him. He'll tell you all sorts of stuff. Probably more than you want to know. <laughs> all but, right. You know, but people also forget, you know, I have a, a sort of a journalist background. I used to write for the Scripps Howard Newswire, mm -hmm. and it went out, my, my column went to 400 newspapers. Right. And there's... So you're I, so you're really Dan Savage. Aha, <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh, that's you. I caught you. You're the one that writes that sex column in the back of that trending uh, than magazine. Poor Jessica Savage. That, we but love I, Dan Savage. He, but, how amazing is his sex but, advice? But anyway, <laughs> he's from uh, you, know, you know what? One of my first jobs when I was in PR mm -hmm. back in a day. I I had a um, do this PR thing for New York Women in Communication, and it was a luncheon. And you know who the guest speaker was? Who? Doctor Ruth. I love Dr. Ruth. I met her on I met her on an airplane. So I years and years ago, back in the day, I was flying to Washington D.C. Remember that campaign, "Say No to Drugs," "Just Say No," and it started with Nancy. Uh, Nancy Reagan started uh, the "Just Say No to Drugs" campaign, and I had uh, I'd flown to uh, Washington D.C. to do a commercial that was being done, and I was doing the makeup for it. And I was coming back to New York, and on the plane sitting next to me was Dr. Ruth. And she's the tiniest little thing. So but i got to tell you, she is beyond adorable. Well, we got to wrap this up because we're getting along. But, we we, but there is a point to this madness somehow, yes. this impromptu madness. Yes. And part of it is, is that Dr. Ruth is not a sex kitten. She's a very intelligent woman, and the reason why you're able to to sure. hear her frank That's sex true. advice is because you don't look at yeah. her and go va va voom. And Elsa Clench is not a girl with a faux tan and a skin tight no. body con dress and a microphone talking about fashion. She's a journalist. Right. And I think that's something people really need to understand also that all types of people need to, you know, be on TV and need to be able to make a point well, and need to be able to talk about but it was things and not only be judged about the I, way I you I But I think the, the whole point here is that Elsa Clinch brought back, she really had she credi credible journalism. Credibility. Credibility and journalism in the fashion industry. And, there's, and a lot of times there's a lot of irresponsible reporting in the fashion industry in terms of in terms of the information that's fed to the American public. As opposed to irresponsible gossip yes, blabbering. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> all right, well, anyway, anyway it was great note, seeing you all. And we will see you soon. Take mm -hmm. care. Cheerio. <laughs> Say bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.